I feel like I've done this before. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This week I am going to show you how you can expand upon your new modular cave tile system if you built one along with me in the past series. I'm gonna show you how to make some really simple doorway passages. Now, because this system has no walls, you technically don't really need like arched doorways to represent pass-throughs, but I find that having a bit of that 3D element is a nice way to, you know, enhance the look of the table and break up the flat uh, kind of look. Also, it's a good way to really show passing from one area to the next rather than it just being a constant tube. So you probably want some of these in your arsenal like I did, and I'm gonna show you how you can do it. I know early on in this channel, I already made pretty much the same thing for um, mine entrances, but these ones are made to match the new set and they're using completely different materials and tools and techniques. So there's lots to be learned here. Now these are a fairly simple foam project to complete and you can probably make do with whatever cutting tools you have at your disposal. But as is often the case, a hot wire is going to be the fastest and most effective way to sculpt these. I'm gonna actually show you how to do it using two different hot wire tools. So if you have a hot wire table like the Proxon or one you made yourself, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly and easily uh, carve these doorways out using one of those. But I'm actually gonna show you the way that I made mine, which was using Proxon's handheld hot wire sculpting tool. And that is by far the best way to pump out a bunch of these that look great really fast and with very little effort. And I know some of you have been eager to see uh, what kind of applications that tool would have for us terrain builders. So this is a perfect opportunity for that. Let's jump over to the workbench and let's start making a set of doorways. I'm gonna be making my set of door openings with half inch uh, insulation foam. Now you can make this out of thicker material if that's what you have on hand. You could even make it out of thinner like foam core if you wanted. This is just my preferred thickness to use for a lot of my projects and I think it works well with the tiles that are also half an inch thick. Of course, to cut these doorways out, you can do it with whatever tools you have on hand. If you just have a knife, you can do it with just a knife. Although because it's kind of wavy cuts in a small area, it is going to be challenging to do it with a knife and the best way is definitely a hot wire tool. So if you're gonna be using a table, the first thing you wanna do is remove the fence, get it out of the way. And I'm gonna start with a strip of foam that's a couple inches tall, you know, just a little bit bigger than you want your doorways. And the reason I kept it in a strip is for when I demonstrate with the handheld, but I'm gonna use it as well here. So basically this is really simple. You can freeform this. You could draw uh, a template on paper that you like and use that as a guide. You can trace it out here. It's not really a big deal. Essentially, all you're gonna do is make a kind of wavy archway, about the size you want for the wall section of the door. And you're left with something kind of like that. Now, really simple, just cut out the opening, making another kind of wavy line, trying to keep, you know, a somewhat um, even width all the way around. And that is the way you get a very quick archway on your hot wire table. So to pump out a bunch of these really quickly that all come out like essentially the same, I found the best way to do it is with this Proxon 12E uh, handheld hot wire cutter. Uh, hot wire foam factory also makes the uh, router tool that's similar that has a you know bendable wire, but I personally, as you all know, prefer the Proxon stuff that I've kind of, I've touched on in previous videos. Keep in mind, if you want to pick one of these up, you do need a power supply with it, the power converter, but you can 
check out on my web shop on blackmagiccraft.ca. I have links to this stuff with the info of what you need to buy for a power supply because there's a few different options. And I'll also put links in the description of this video for purchasing these if you want. So first thing I'm gonna do, when you can't see because it's off to the side, I'm gonna turn my power supply on and I'm having it set to the highest setting. And essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create the shape that I want of the archway, of the outer archway first. And it's nice because you can just bend this to whatever you want, get a kind of appropriate shape, which is probably kind of hard to see because the wire's thin, but bent the wire and it's nice because it's not a smooth curve. It has these kind of like bends and dents in it that help for this, you know, do that kind of natural stone shape. I'm gonna tighten all these adjustment points so that it stays where I need it. I'm gonna turn my heat all the way up because uh, this is a thick gauge wire and I'm going to be making a lot of cuts so I want this very hot and then the nice thing is this has a trigger you can probably hear a very high pitch screech and I'm just going to use this to cut out the uh, outer perimeters kind of assembly line style one two Three, four. So you can see that you can cut a whole ton of these very quickly. You know, you can make a dozen of them in, you know, 30 seconds. And it does, it, it is hard to make these cuts stay kind of square and they will taper up and, but that kind of works for this particular application. I don't mind that whatsoever. Now, you want to give the, the tool a few seconds to cool down, and we're going to do the same method to cut out the inner part of the archway. So just get a shape that you like, test it against the piece, and the same method. we got to let this heat up again. Now you got your inner opening cut out super easy. So you can see how quickly you could make a big batch of these. Done. You could even put these center pieces aside and I'm sure you can find a good use for them. So now let's move on to basing these. So you want these to sit on some kind of a little base and what I'm using is a really heavy cardstock or chipboard but you can pick these up on Amazon, you can pick them up at the craft store or whatever. I just recommend avoiding corrugated cardboard uh, but basically any stiff you know thin material that you can use as a base is going to be fine. And we're just gonna actually hot glue these onto the base here. So just take some hot glue, put a nice healthy dab on the bottom of each side and press it into place onto your base. Hold it there for you know, a little bit until it stiffens up. And that's that. You can also then take your hot glue and kind of go around the joint and use your glue gun, you know, DM Scotty style to pull up some texture that will kind of look like that, you know, I don't even know what you call it. You know, in caves, the, it's like a stalactite kind of pattern on the walls, just where minerals and stuff have deposited from water running down, just giving it a bit of texture. You can do some on the top hanging down too, if you'd like. It's not really necessary, but it's something you can do. Just kind of dress it up a bit. Let that glue cool off and then kind of remove all the wisps. And then we're gonna move on to coating this in the, uh, the hardener that I like to use on styrofoam when I need something more than just Mod Podge. 
It's also gonna give it some texture. So let's make a batch of that. This is gonna be essentially the same thing that I did on my uh, big rocks video. I'm just gonna take some drywall joint compound, put it in a little container, and I'm going to take some Mod Podge, pour it in. Ratios aren't really important here, but if you're a stickler for ratio, I would say, you know, like maybe five parts joint compound to one part Mod Podge, but if you put more Mod Podge on, it's not gonna hurt. Gonna mix this up so it becomes nice and smooth and the Mod Podge is mixed into the joint compound consistently. Now, this is a point when you can mix some paint into it if you want. If you already have decided on the color you're going to base coat these in, feel free to mix some in if you would like, just to help you out a bit. But essentially, now, we're gonna get a little bit messy here. I'm gonna take this putty and start covering the piece. And I'm gonna cover all of the foam and all of the base. And this is going to make the styrofoam rock hard and it's going to apply a lot of texture to the ground on this thin cardstock without the risk of any sort of warping from PVA glue. You know, there's always these horror stories about people building these things and then all of a sudden their bases are warped and they wonder why. Well, if you put thin cardboard or cardstock and cover it in a glue that <laughs> shrinks when it dries and adds water to a porous surface, well, that's what's gonna happen. So this gives you lots of texture. It's gonna turn this piece rock hard and you're not gonna get any warping at all on these bases, even with a thin chipboard base. And, you know, just use a finger to spread it around and make the texture. There's no real science here. It's like arts and crafts time. The trickiest part is covering the last little bit while still holding it. And you don't need to go super thick with this. You just need to put a nice coating. It's like you're icing a cake. And just play around with it till you find a, a texture or pattern that you like that you think looks like a stone wall. Put these aside to dry somewhere. It's gonna take a couple hours for this to dry, uh, but once it is, you can move on to the next step. All right, so as you can see, I have skipped ahead here and I have a set of these fully painted out, but have not gotten the black wash yet. You don't really need to see me do those steps because the painting schedule and technique is exactly the same as I used on the new cave tile set. And you can see that in part three of that series. You want to copy the exact same painting technique that you used on your cave set, obviously, so that they match. But I do want to take some time to talk about a few important things from getting from the you know, drywall compound stage to the painted stage. First thing is you gotta let this really dry and you absolutely need to cover this in Mod Podge. In other tutorials, I talk about the Mod Podge being optional, uh, an added extra bit of protection and hardness to stuff like tiles. When you are using drywall joint compound to stiffen up foam or to add texture, Mod Podge is no longer optional. It is a important requirement and for two reasons. One is that while this compound gets very hard, it actually stays very brittle and chalky. So if you don't coat it in Mod Podge or glue or something, it's going to continually kind of wear off and it's never gonna be really sealed. 
The other reason you need to do it is because if you're going to be applying a wash of any type, that's a very liquidy application and all that water is going to turn this to mush and it's just going to smear and make a big mess and ruin your piece. So you absolutely have to give this a coating in Mod Podge. I also really, really, really highly recommend that you coat the bottom of the chipboard or cardstock that you are using because you don't want to saturate this with water and then have this part so soak up and absorb a bunch of the water from the wash and absorb and warp and make a big mess. So if you coat these in Mod Podge, you will be fine. If you don't and you have a problem, that's your fault for not paying attention. The other thing to keep in mind is that you don't need to bother using a Mod Podge that's mixed with black paint like I usually do. You can just put it on clear because the first step in painting is going to be using a kind of tan or suede color. So painting it black Mod Podge is just going to make your life harder. Use it just straight clear out of the container. If you want, you could also mix in some of the some of your first color. So painting schedule, same as the other episode. Cover everything in a suede or a tan and then use a sponge to stipple on, you know, a kind of chestnutty cinnamon brown and a kind of reddish one. Just use the same ones you used on your cave tiles. One thing to keep in mind is use a smaller sponge than you use on your cave tiles and make the scale appropriate. Uh, be a lot lighter with the sponging on these than you did on the big tile areas. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want these to look too dark or too red. And same as the tiles, finish it off with a liberal dry brushing of a off-white or vanilla to kind of tone down all those uh, reds and browns. And you're going to be left with, you know, pieces that look something like this. So to complete the paint, you want to apply the same wash that you did on your cave tiles. And if you followed my advice, you should have a container with some of that same batch of wash left over so that you can make pieces that match. I don't necessarily recommend dipping these just because of the cardstock bottoms. Even if they're sealed, you know, you still run a risk of oversaturating it. So you can just brush these on. Um, I store my wash in one of these little um, spray bottles that I got from Dollar Store. And you can actually just apply the wash with the spray bottle. Now, I'm gonna take a moment and get more paper here because this is a little bit messy. All right, couldn't find newspaper, but put down a big piece of foam just because I don't wanna have all of this all over my desk. So just going through, spraying every side. The nice thing about applying it this way is that It'll actually run down the pieces in kind of a cool, natural way that will mimic the water running down the cave walls. But of course, you can just brush this on. You don't have to do this. It's just a method you can choose to do. And I'm doing because my wash is already saved in this spray bottle. The only thing that I'm seeing difficult with this is the insides. So I'm just going to make sure that I get wash into the insides of these openings as well. You know me, I definitely pick an unnecessarily messy way of doing this. Now, just take all of them, let them sit on a dry surface so they're not all sitting in the puddle of wash. And once the wash is dry, you can complete the project the same way I complete all of my foam projects, which is with a liberal spray of fast drying Minoax polyurethane in a satin finish. And then they're gonna be ready for the table. All right, there you have it guys. That is how you can bang out a set of a whole bunch of these cave doorways, you know, on a Saturday afternoon for your table. Obviously there are a lot of options and enhancements you can make on these doorways. Some, you know, you might want some that have a wood door, a cave-in, a solid stone slab, portcullis, whatever. There's lots of 
cool things you can do now that you have this basic you know model built of this standard and maybe in future episodes i will touch on some options but i think you guys can kind of figure that out for yourself. Of course, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, drop me a comment below and hit subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new episodes every Friday, so that is the best way for you to stay on top of the projects that I'm making. And if you wanna pick up any of the tools or supplies that I use and recommend for yourself, you can head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store where I link to all of the stuff that I stand behind and recommend you using on your projects. It's also a great way to help out the channel financially because they are affiliate links and I make a small commission through those purchases. So it's a great way to support me without spending anything extra. However, if you do really want to contribute to the channel financially in an extra way, I really encourage you to check out my Patreon page. It is the best way to support this channel and we are building an awesome community, a fellowship of fellow crafters who are part of the family. Just check it out. I would love it if you did. Every bit of help goes a long way. So until next week, guys, cheers and happy crafting.